Hey everybody, I'm Chris Guns. Welcome back to Pro Boxing Insider Radio. And in just a minute, I'm going to be joined by Tion Kennedy, fresh off his fifth round stoppage loss at the hands of Guillermo Rigando of Cuba. He got his shot, but came up short. Let's see what he has to say in retrospect. Welcome Tion Kennedy. Uh, June 9th, you had your, your well-deserved title shot against Cuban Guillermo Rigando. Didn't go quite the way you wanted it to go. Take me back to your arrival in Vegas. You fought on the Pacquiao Bradley undercard. What was that like for you? Uh, that was, uh, that was like I said before, that was a uh, dream come true. You know what I mean? I still appreciate the opportunity I had, even though it didn't go like I wanted to, but I'm definitely going to be back stronger. But I, I'm definitely going to move another one, two, 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 six, so. Mm -hmm. and, and that was the first time you fought on a card of that magnitude. Was it overwhelming? Yeah. At all? Uh, yeah. Uh, but it felt like it wasn't overwhelming. I was trying to stay in my head. It's not, it's not as fight is overwhelming. Now it's going to be overwhelming, but it, it was a little bit. Yeah. How about the weigh-in? Bet you never thought you'd have more people at your weigh-in than for your fight, did you? <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it, it was crazy. It seemed like it was, uh, like it was a fight game in there. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And what was it like the night of the fight? It's time for your ring walk. How, how different did it feel to you to be in that atmosphere? Uh, it's a... It's a I don't know, I, I can't really explain the feeling, like, uh, it, it, it felt like a dream in there, because, like, first, uh, when the lights hit you, uh, the lights are hot, and, I don't know, the, the ring entries, everything was, like, just crazy. Yeah, and you see Jim Lampley and Emmanuel Stewart out there. Max yeah, 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 yeah. It's got to be overwhelming. Yeah. So you were nervous a little bit going out there? Yeah, I was nervous. I, I was nervous than I was for any other fight, but that that'd be expected from the... Uh, for like the first time fighting for war titles, and not being just fighting for war titles, just I'm fighting a manufacturer for, for the first time, so of course I was nervous. Yeah, and when you see Rigando in the other corner, what's going through your mind while you look across the ring at him? Yeah, uh, so I look across him, I was thinking like I, I can beat this guy, I need to, I, I need to beat this guy I win that title. Yeah. And and the bell rings after Michael Buffer's done with the intros. What what do you notice at first when when the fight starts? Uh, I didn't really know nothing that uh, that was different from him. Just that he did, he stood there a little bit more than, than he used to. I guess he was trying to make a statement. Everybody always say he fight like an amateur and he always running. Yeah, did his did his calm style strike you at all? Um, not really. I, like I said, I think it was more than me being nervous because, like I said, like they started the fight like in the fifth round or like that. Mm -hmm. He kept knocking me down. Like as you can, if you seen the fight, tell me that I, I wasn't hurt at all. Just that I guess that he trying to hit me. I was, I was just so nervous. I just fell, and, and it looked that way too when I was watching the fight. My leg wasn't, my feet, my leg wasn't like what it needed to be, and stuff like that. And my leg was like just everywhere. Yeah, he caught you with a couple of big shots in round one, and he got credit for yeah. one knockdown. How, how would you describe his power? He doesn't throw a lot of punches really, but when he lands, it, it's pinpoint. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't say like like you like say you do have power, but I wouldn't say like striking power. I've been hit harder than that before, but it's just like just punches that you can't see. You you very fast, like you say, you very uh, pinpoint on on the punches. Yeah, did it, did the southpaw stance bother you though? No, no, it wasn't that. Cause I, I fought a lot of southpaws. Yeah, Emmanuel Stewart was impressed with you. But he credited Guillermo's accuracy for staying in control while while you're fighting him. You're thinking too, like. Did his accuracy impress you from the outset? Uh, uh, yeah, his accuracy impressed me, but I think it was more, not not take away from accuracy enough, but I think it was more me, like, I'm saying in the way of the left hand, because that's all you really throw anyway. I should, I could have made adjustments to get away from the left hand, but I was, like, in the straight line of the left hand, so he hit me. So the accuracy with the left hand was pretty good because of that, too. Yeah, in round two, you were down a couple times. You weren't, yeah. you weren't hurt, really. But how disheartening is it to feel like points coming against you? Exactly. How 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 does it feel when, when you when you know you're still getting the points against you, but you're not hurt at all? What's going through your mind at the time? Like what? <laughs> you saying what's wrong? Why I keep falling? Yeah. I ain't no reason me to fall. I'm not hurt, but I don't know. I I I, 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 I ain't know they were gonna start the fight that soon, but I guess. They just looking out for me. I don't take nothing away from the uh, from the judge or nothing from the ref. Mm -hmm. Did you have a hard time not getting frustrated? Um, not really. 
I really don't look, really get that frustrated in the ring, but I just a little frustrated myself because I just kept falling. I was saying, why I keep falling? I'm not hurt. So that's only why I was a little frustrated. And in the third round, you tried to kind of take him to war a couple times. Did you did you feel he was capable of fighting that way just as well when you tried to switch tactics a little bit? Yeah, I thought so. I, uh, I could have kept fighting that way. Yeah. He was landing like half of his power shots, but he never overcommits. To be in position yeah. to counter, does it? No, you know, like, like, like it is kind of hard to fight him because you not know, a fight the type of fighter that uh, I would just say that uh, take chances. Is really, it was really kind of hard to fight a guy like that. Yeah. Now he caught you at the end of the fourth round, I remember, and you had this like look on your face. You weren't hurt, but when the ref is like counting, you kind of look like someone looking at a magician. You just couldn't figure out how he kept landing and putting you down like that. So I think that when he stuck on my foot, I believe, I think he knocked me down that room. Oh, you were telling the ref about the, he yeah, about the foot? Yeah, about the foot. He stuck on my foot. Oh. And they called it a knockdown. So that's what you were saying to the ref? I yeah. Oh, okay. Then in the 50, he got you with a left hook, and the ref stopped the fight on you. How'd you feel still being in your right mind and, and still getting stopped? Uh, in my mind, I was like that. Uh, just that, like, I said, like, the ref did his job when you pushed through, like, I was a little disappointed, but then I could say I kept falling. Like, what can, what can a rough do? Like, if a guy keeps getting knocked down, I mean, he's really low on point. But, like I said, I think if it was anybody else fighting, like, I know if I like a Mexican or something, they probably would let it keep going. But, uh, like I said, I, I'm not mad at uh, the referee. He did his job. And, you um, I just got to come back stronger next time I fight. That's right. And, and when you get away from the cameras and you get back to the dressing room, what do you say about the still champion to your to your people in your corner? Like, what do you guys say to each other? Uh, it, was, it was pretty quiet in there. They just asked me about, like, was, you, was I hurt any other time? I was just saying no, but other than that, it was just pretty quiet. We just watched the fight on the TV back in the dressing room. You know what I mean? And, and try, to, try to tell a little jokes and try to laugh, but I wouldn't think about it so much. Yeah. And did you did you stay and watch the Pacquiao Bradley fight? Yeah, I stayed and watched it. I watched it, and then but and like the eleventh round, I left out. I thought they were gonna say Pacquiao won as I was leaving out. <laughs> they said Bradley won. Yeah. Would you would you think <laughs> yeah, of that? You just, how many rounds did you how many rounds did you think Pacquiao won? Uh, well, from like from what I what I see, uh, I say you probably. I think he probably lost like three or four rounds. Mm -hmm. So what did you think when when you heard that decision? Uh, I just like everybody else was. Uh, that was, was crazy. That was a crazy decision. That they I mean, he barely. Yeah. When did you get back from Vegas? Uh, that Sunday. I left that Sunday. Yeah, next day? Yeah. And how do you feel now? It's time to, you had time to let it sink in and you got your footing back under you. You just celebrated your birthday, by the way, happy? Birthday belatedly. All right, thank you. Where do you go from here, though, Tia? Uh, uh, I think the same, same thing. Uh, back in, like, I'm back, back in the gym this week, tomorrow, so, I mean, do the same thing, training hard, but like I said, I'm moving out of 126, because I wasn't going to fight 22 with that fight, but it came with me with the opportunity of a world title, and you, you can't say no to an opportunity like that, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so, I guess I got to see what they got to offer that yeah, at 126. Yeah, you got yourself a lot of experience and, and you can learn and get better after a loss. Definitely. You know, everyone has to make some changes somewhere. Where do you where do you, where do you think you're going to focus on making your changes for next time? Um, well, I, like I said, man, everybody ought to get me with this. Uh, when I first started boxing, when I first started turning pro, I was more of like a uh, boxer. It's that like a slugger, so a lot of people get on me about that. So I was trying to make it, uh, like, get back to boxing, uh, move my head, being a slip boxer, the CFC, see what that's taking. Mm -hmm. So are you, are you looking maybe at trying to get a fight with someone like Gary Russell, maybe? Another southpaw with fast hands? What are you seeing him? Uh, I mean, that, would, that would be good, probably down the line, down the line when, uh, when the opportunity, right? Cause I, they said something about me fighting him before when I was. Uh, 122, mm -hmm. they wanted me to go over and fight him, so that, that's still, uh, that's still like an opportunity, you know what I mean? They were going to fight for IVF or something like that, so you just got to wait and see.
And then you got Nonito Donaire. How do you see a Rigando Donaire fight playing out? Uh, I don't know. I mean, they, they like, it seems to me to be like another, that's like another, uh, Pacquiao yeah, and uh, Mayweather, but if you want to fight each other, but one person don't want to fight this person, and I don't, I don't know about that one. Yeah. When, when are we going to see you in the ring again, Tion? You're going to the gym tomorrow? When you, when you want your next fight to be? Uh, at least about, I say like around like September, October. Yeah, can't wait, man. Thanks for being on again, champ. It's a humbling oh. game. It humbles you, and everyone, if they stay in, they're, they're going to get humbled too. You know, you're not alone, man. Yeah, no it's a mental sure. game, and you're going to be back better than ever. Thanks for joining us, man. Uh, uh, thank you. And thanks for having me. All right. Take it easy. All right. All right you and there you have it, Tion Kennedy, out of the dumps and back in the gym tomorrow. Instead of dwelling on it, the great warrior goes back to the gym and gets better. And we look forward to seeing Tion in the ring again. We want to thank Tion for joining us on Pro Boxing Insider Radio. Follow me on Twitter at Chris2Guns. That's Chris2GUNZZ. Thank you.